Hello everyone. July 25th to July 31st is celebrated by the Indian Academy of Pediatrics as ORS week and 2022 is no exception. World ORS Day is celebrated on July 29th and keeping in view with this theme of celebrations is this video. So coming to oral rehydration therapy, it is nothing but administration of fluid and electrolytes orally and the aim of it is to treat mild dehydration and prevent severe dehydration. Why we need to do it is because whenever there is a water and electrolyte deficit, correction is possible orally. It helps in reducing the mortality of childhood diarrheas and oral rehydration therapy is cheap, easy as well as scientifically proven. Now a little bit about the historical aspects keeping in mind this week's celebrations. It was developed in the late 1960s and when there was an epidemic in East India in the 1970s, ORS proved to be a lifesaver. And in the last 40 years, it is the single-handed medical invention that has saved maximum number of lives. If you consider the pure mortality rate in 1980, 5 million deaths were there in the under 5 age group because of diarrhea alone. And that number has reduced to 1.8 million in 2000, though still a substantial number. There has been a substantial decrease in the mortality because of the intervention of ORS. Now the problem is not availability, but in today's scenario, the problem is low usage by the healthcare workers. And that is one of the main themes as far as celebration of this over week, this week is concerned, number one. And number two, spreading awareness amongst all the practitioners also. Now coming to the scientific basis of ORS, we know that the absorption of water as well as electrolytes, namely sodium and potassium is near normal in diarrhea. We also know that the glucose absorption is coupled along with sodium absorption. And this along with the water is a co uh, absorption import across the intestinal mucosa. Now when the ratio of sodium and glucose is maintained in equal proportion that is 1 is to 1 there is a maximum absorption of these electrolytes and relatively amongst all of these potassium absorption is by passive diffusion. So the ultimate synopsis of all of this is water and electrolyte losses in diarrhea are effectively corrected by oral rehydration therapy. Now diagrammatically if you consider this import like I said we have the SGLT import here, which is a course import between both sodium as well as glucose on one side. Water acts as a direct mechanism as well as potassium is by passive diffusion. So the energy involved is very minimum, but keeping in mind that potassium is a passive diffusion and water goes through active transport, as long as we maintain that balance between sodium and glucose, this import will act in the maximum manner. Now coming to the ORS availability, there was an old classical ORS available by WHO. The current formulation is a low osmo osmolarity ORS and the third one is what we call resomal which is a rehydration solution of malnutrition. Now coming to the old WHO ORS, it had a total osmolarity of 311 mini osmol in which sodium comprised of 90, potassium 20, chloride 80 and glucose 111. Potassium is kept at the minimum because it is by passive diffusion where it gets absorbed. So the key thing to keep in mind in old WHO ORS is the total osmolarity is 311. Now coming to the low osmolarity WHO ORS, this is the current formulation. So this is the current one. So keeping this in mind, it has the total osmolarity is now reduced to 245. The benefit of a reduced osmolarity ORS is osmolarity induced diarrhea itself was becoming a slight issue. So that has been taken care of. The levels of sodium and glucose are maintained at 75 each, potassium remains at 20 and chloride is maintained at 65. Now coming to resomol. Resomol is nothing but rehydration solution in malnutrition. The osmolarity here is slightly increased to 300. And because the children who are malnourished or who are having some severe, severe acute malnutrition are more prone for hypoglycemia, glucose correction is also equally required in them. So the osmolarity of glucose is maintained higher at 125. But if you observe here, the ratio between sodium and glucose is altered. But it does not affect the efficacy. So the key thing to keep in mind is resomal is exclusively used in malnutrition. So coming to the overall osmolarity, it is 300 with sodium being 45, potassium being 40, chloride being 76 and glucose being 125, giving a total osmolarity of 300. Comparing the three, the old WHO ORS was 311. The low osmolarity WHORS is 245 and resomol is 300. 
a little bit about the preparation of resumal. So we take the standard WHO formulation, that is a low osmolarity one, mix it with 2 liters of water. Along with that, we add 50 grams of glucose to increase the glucose content so that we get 125. And apart from that, we add 40 ml of mineral mix. The purpose of mineral mix is to ensure that we add supplementary electrolytes of zinc, magnesium and copper in trace quantities. Now a slight deviation from topic rice based ORS, so rice powder is also known to contain a good amount of starch and carbohydrate. So this also can release twice the amount of glucose and that is more than enough to meet the physiological requirement of the body. The protein which is present in rice also helps in enhancing of this by the absorption of amino acids namely leucine and lysine. And the osmotic activity is lower than that of blood because the osmotic activity of uh, rice based ORS is 220. Whereas if you consider tissue based it is around 280 to 300 keeping 290 as an average and the calorie content will ensure that it prevents malnutrition and a few trials have shown that it helps in reducing the stool volume in cholera but again this is more in trial basis there are insufficient data available for non cholera based diarrhea so rice based ORS as of now is licensed for use in cholera. Now briefly about the advantages of ORS, like I mentioned in the initial slide, one is the low cost. Secondly, it requires, it rather eliminates completely the requirement for an IV-9 placement if started early. So a case with no dehydration is maintained as a case with no dehydration and it doesn't progress to either summer severe dehydration. And the important thing is treatment can be done and continued at home itself and very little to no side effects at all. Now the limitations of ORS therapy that is ORT is quite simple. If the mental status is altered or if the child is aspirated you cannot go for it. When there is a paralytic ileus because of uh, hypokalemia inherently you cannot go for it. Severe de dehydration requires an IV correction in form of bolus as well as maintenance so there is no exception there. And if there is a continuously high stool output rate the failure rate of oral dehydration therapy is higher so large volume stool persistent diarrhea might require additional intervention in form of IV correction and if there is a persistent gastritis or severe vomiting giving ORS itself will cause a further loss so that positive balance will not be maintained. Now specifically for the theme of 2022 as per the government initiatives the theme for this year is Jodi number one ORS and zinc. So as far as we all know as far as the treatment of diarrhea is concerned both go complementary and hand in hand. ORS helps in preventing dehydration and helps in ensuring that the volume whatever is lost is replenished and ensures that electrolyte imbalance does not happen. The role of zinc helps in reducing the diarrhea, reducing the frequency of stools and ensuring that the gut is re-epithelialized. Along with zinc and ORS anyway probiotics we do prescribe on a day to day basis. So on that note we come to the end of this short presentation. The purpose of it was to refresh uh, uh, memory as far as the theoretical aspects of ORS as well as uh, towards the students who are giving examinations ORS is a short note question in as both undergraduate as well as postgraduate exams. So thank you for watching the video and uh, hope you log in to watch the next one also. Thank you.